What is this I see today? Just announced New York City starting to evict migrants. I mean, New York City was a sanctuary city, right? State. I, I thought for sure the city was a sanctuary city. They were taking in migrants. I know they were taking the people from where I am in Texas by sending those migrants up. But let me tell you something. We got a lot of stuff happening down here in Texas that a lot of people don't see. And I see it. And we know it every day because we live in it. But a lot of people don't get what's really going on. You only see what you see in media, right? Well, we're going to check out media today because somehow New York City's <laughs> saying bye to these migrants. You know why? It's so expensive. And they run over the city. There's no... Anyway, I can't go any further. Without further ado, we're just going to watch, see what this thing says. You won't believe what's happening to migrants in New York. This is the biggest deportation spree the city has ever seen. There's been a surge in gang-related crimes in New York City lately, and the city is finally addressing its migrant situation. However, not everything is set in stone, because there's one factor that could still disrupt this new policy, and his name is Joe Biden. New York City is evicting 3,500 migrants. Like he's going to step in and say, no, you can't? Like you can't do it? There comes a point where there's so much money and so many resources and so much space that's taken up, they don't, they, their own residents end up suffering. Families from the shelters where they are currently housed. The New York Times reports families who've been at the shelters longer than 60 days will have to reapply. For New York City is set to begin the process of evicting migrant families from city-run shelters. It's now three fewer homeless encampments in the city. As the city continues to look for places to house migrants. The shelter system has been at the breaking point for months. Since spring 2022, New York City has set up a widespread system of emergency shelters and temporary tent communities wow. to accommodate tens of thousands of asylum seekers who have arrived seeking assistance over the last two years. Currently, more than 64... Here's my issue. I've got so many issues with this. I don't speak about all the time. But number one, asylum seekers, we've, we've stretched the definition. We've thinned it out so much. Asylum seekers, from what I know, are supposed to be people escaping harm. But when you interview a lot of these people, they want resources, they want money, they want to be taken care of, they want a job. That's not the purpose of seeking asylum. If you want to do that, you can. You just have to go through the legal way to be able to get into the country. So you can get into the country. It's a longer process and a long process. But asylum seeking is, I am in fear, I am in harm. Not just, oh, I found a better place to go so I can get taken care of. And I think that takes money away from resources all around our own people. And here's my second issue with it. Why in the world can't we take these resources? And I'm thinking, I heard Cat Williams say, why haven't we been taking these resources up to now and using them on people that are homeless and people that need in our own country and make sure that they're cared for and taken care of and then work on helping people? It confuses me. 1,600 asylum seekers are residing in emergency shelters managed by the city. These shelters include repurposed hotels and large tent-like structures designed for housing. The asylum seeker population consists of single adults, adult families, and families with children. They are located through the city's five boroughs, although their distribution is not uniform. Manhattan and Queens host a larger portion of asylum seekers and shelters hmm. compared to other boroughs, with approximately 38% and 31% of all asylum seekers, Wonder why. respectively, as of March 3rd, 2024. In his statement, Mayor Adams said, the right to shelter was never intended to apply to a population larger than most U.S. cities descending on the five boroughs in less than two years. In the wake oh, of New York City's true. decision to evict migrants from their temporary shelters, a new crisis has emerged. A recent discovery of two illegal shelters housing over 100 asylum seekers has revealed the dark side of the city's response to the migrant crisis. For the second time in two days, the NYPD has uncovered an illegal makeshift migrant shelter. Whoa. Inspectors from the Department of Buildings responded to a call on a Wednesday afternoon regarding an alleged illegal conversion at a two-story commercial building in the Fordham neighborhood on East Kingsbridge Road. Upon arrival, they discovered that one of the stores within the building had been turned into unauthorized sleeping quarters. The inspectors uncovered a concerning scene inside. On the first floor alone, there were 34 beds, and in the basement, 
they found another 10 beds tightly packed together. Moreover, they came across extension cords, e-bikes, space heaters, and hot plates on both floors. Due to the hazardous conditions found- Man, this is terrible. I wonder what the purpose, is that to get money? To set up an illegal shelter? Like so you can extort from them and you just cram them all in these spaces with these heaters and these stoves and man, who knows what could inside, happen. Inside, including severe overcrowding, lack of natural light, and ventilation issues. Yeah. The DOB issued a vacate order for the building. This is the other thing. When it gets too crowded and too many people, it becomes dangerous. It becomes a hazard, a risk. Citing life-threatening circumstances. Natalie, talk to some of the neighbors out here. They'll tell you this was no secret. Migrants often spotted coming and going every single day. Officials from the city's Office of Emergency Management responded to the situation, coordinating efforts to address immediate needs and possibly referring the affected individuals to asylum seeker services if required. Later that evening, some of the migrant men who had been residing there were spotted gathering their belongings and loading them onto a bus. One of the residents mentioned that they used a nearby gym for showering, highlighting the challenges they faced in basic living conditions. Local residents were aware of the illegal shelter, with one neighbor revealing that the occupants paid monthly fees ranging from $300 to $600. According to them, conditions in the basement were particularly dire, lacking basic amenities like toilets and bathing facilities. How much was he charging them? I think they said $300, some say $600. The landlord received two violations, one for failing to maintain the building and another for using it in a manner inconsistent with city records. Interestingly, this landlord had previously operated a similar illegal shelter <laughs> in Queens. Inspectors found that the commercial space and cell- See, now this is what happens. Uh, as a mental health professional, like this whole thing disturbs me. Number one, it's not helping people. This isn't helping people. This is using people. It's extorting from people. It's these, especially these illegal things. You know, you're just trying to get money from them and cramming them in a space. They have nowhere else to turn. That's all they've got so that they can stay here. And number two, this entire crisis is happening because we have let so many people in that we can't take care of. It's like a childcare center, you know, a daycare center that lets double the amount of children in that they can actually hold with the staff they have. And now each class has 40 children for one parent, one teacher, and they can't feed them, they can't watch them, they can't manage their behavior, they can't nurture and care for them, they can't educate them, they can't do anything because there's so many people overrun and going all over the place and just basically ruining the city at this point. And it's the ones that step out that start committing crime or start doing things that are illegal that create the biggest problem, not to mention just the, the, the mess that's created from it. It just is a mess here. Miller had been converted into sleeping quarters with 14 bunk beds and 13 beds crammed into these areas. Plumbing work had been done without permits and there was a lack of proper exits, mm, ventilation so and bad. natural light for the occupants. It was yesterday's raid in Queens. It now brings the total number of migrants to more than 100, all housed in two separate commercial businesses owned, investigators say, by the same man. Abu Sar, a migrant himself who owns a furniture store, expressed empathy for the residents, most of whom hailed from his native Senegal. Yeah. He I'm, recounted how he better. reluctantly began offering them shelter after the city restricted the duration that single migrants could stay in official shelters. This is the situation. This is what we're trying to avoid for them to be out there in this cold weather. The discovery of the illegal shelter came to light after a neighbor raised concerns about e-bikes parked near her property. This prompted FDNY inspectors to look into the matter, revealing a situation that had been operating for months, unbeknownst to many in the neighborhood. DOB issuing two violations to their landlord. They say also operated an illegal migrant shelter at a furniture store in South Richmond Hill, Queens. Worse still, it has been revealed that the city is spending millions of dollars to pay slumlords to convert some properties into shelters, despite the inherent risks. Not only does this put migrants in danger, mm -hmm. but it also raises serious ethical concerns about the city's priorities. Yeah. A once empty brewery building located at 133rd Saint in Gowanus is undergoing a transformation into a 400 bed homeless shelter. This initiative is led by real estate investor David Levitan, 
who has been associated with allegations of poor building conditions in the past, as indicated by Department of Buildings permits. See, it's one thing if you do it the right way and you do what you're supposed to do, and we need to do this the right way. It's another if you just hire somebody to like, can you just outfit this place? And he's already got a history of screwing things up. City records. Kiwanis residents said they're not only concerned about the impact the proposed shelter could have on the neighborhood, but they say it's too close to a toxic Superfund site and is unfit for anyone to live there. Levitan, a prominent figure in the city's homeless shelter scene, has previously faced scrutiny over property maintenance and business practices, as posted in a 2021 New York Times investigation. The building, a former factory situated at the intersection of 3rd and Bond Streets, was originally zoned for manufacturing purposes. In 2018, it was listed among the Guana structures that locals sought to preserve as landmarks. However, nearby residents are now expressing concerns about the lack of community input regarding Levitan's mm. conversion project. Questions have arisen regarding how the conversion of this building into a homeless shelter was approved without more extensive consultation with the community. Yeah, the people in the community are the ones that suffer, right? All these people come in. They haven't been used to living here. They haven't been in America. They don't know kind of the society and the system that we have here. And they're in survival mode. They're trying to just make it. I mean, they've gotten resources coming into the country. They should be taken care of. But how they treat and respect and work with other people, people in the community are probably like, we don't want all of this in here. We have our community and we want to keep it the way that it is. And now you turn this thing into a 400 bed facility. What is that going to do to the community that may not be able to, to handle that? Political turf war after the city controller Brad Lander strips Mayor Adams of his emergency powers to approve contracts related to the migrant crisis. Late 2023, Mayor Eric Adams lost the ability to award emergency contracts without following the usual competitive bidding process. This change came after a medical services provider, DACO, came under scrutiny for allegedly providing spoiled meals to migrants under a no-bid contract worth $432 million. Wow. Additionally, the state has pointed See, out that the city money. has not utilized available sites across the five boroughs, like convention centers, armories, racetracks, and college dorms, capable of housing up to 3,000 people. Currently, more than 70,000 migrants are being accommodated across these boroughs. 70, the Department 000. of Buildings issued the permit in November wow. for the conversion of the commercial building on 133rd Street into a transient lodging house, featuring 16 sleeping room accommodations with a total of 400 beds along with associated offices. But during a recent visit, there was no evident activity at the location, though neighbors have noticed workers inside installing drywall partitions in recent days. According to a spokesperson from the Department of Buildings, the proposed use for transient accommodations and hotels is permitted in M1 districts. The permit specifies that the shelter will be managed by a philanthropic or nonprofit institution, sponsored by the Department of Homeless Services, and the certificate of occupancy will be discontinued once the shelter ceases its operations. The city's Department of Social Services says Bragg's Home Care Corp will provide wraparound services and case management for residents. It says with more than 178,000 migrants in the city now, quote, additional capacity is desperately... 178,000. Now we have millions coming up through Texas, I believe. <laughs> I mean, and I'm up in Houston. You know, the border's about five hours south if I drive to Mexico from Houston. And we have definitely seen a migrant push up through our city all the way here. And part of that's through buses, part of that's just through other transport means, but it's all along the southern border. And then they, of course, got moved up to the north because there's no way this can all be, there's no way this many people, 10 to 15 million people, can just be cared for and can be given. If they're given money, if they're given uh, aid and benefits, if they're given a place to sleep, a hotel, or a shelter, that all costs money. It's got to come from somewhere. It's not just magic, and it's not just printed, so we have it. We have to pay that price. And the worst part for me, I go back to it, we have a lot of people in this country that love this country, that want to work in this country, that want to give back to this country, that get nothing. They're homeless. They're on the streets. And we can't take care of them, but yet we're taking care of these people. That concerns me. We need it. A spokesperson from the Department of Homeless Services has confirmed that BH Rags Home Care Corp., a home health care provider, will oversee operations at 133rd Street 
and the site is scheduled to open in the summer of 2024. And a recent letter from the Housing Preservation and Development Office, part of a permit application, reveals that Beach Rags Home Care Corp. has secured a nine-year lease with the building owner. The Department of Homeless hmm. Services declined to comment on the city's financial arrangement with the nonprofit for running the site. Bragg's Home Care Corp. plans to maintain 24-hour on-site security and establish a round-the-clock hotline for community concerns. They are dedicated to ongoing community involvement regarding the emergency shelter. Local elected officials and community leaders were informed several months in advance about the shelter. If you ask the majority of people, they might support it, but the people who are actually going to meetings and who have the time to organize and go to those meetings, they're the ones who are more vocal about it, and they're the ones who might be uh, rejecting it. Now, if you are wondering why this project is receiving so much backlash, here's a little backstory. In September, 133rd Street owner LLC, represented by Yosef Rabinowitz, purchased the building for $19.5 million from longtime owner, HFK Inc. Levitan's Liberty One Group, shares an address with the LLC, and Yosef Rabinowitz, also known as Jojo, is a partner at this company. Levitan is identified as the building's owner in documents accompanying the Department of Buildings permit application. Both Levitan and Rabinowitz have faced numerous complaints from shelter residents and tenants over the years. Levitan was listed on the Public Advocate's Worst Landlord Watch List. Last year, the city canceled plans for a shelter in the Bronx owned by Levitan after significant community opposition, as reported by the city. Mm. This year, Levitan has faced legal action twice. And nothing's on the up and up. Why can't we get people who do the right thing? You know, if you've got a contract to do something, then do it. Why do you have to be shady? Why do you got to take money and not give services or not build and create? And these people just, it's just, it exacerbates the problem. It's what makes people not trust. It's what makes people take more or manipulate more or extort more. And it's what makes our system continue to run and break down the way it is now. From the Housing Preservation and Development for failing to provide hot water to tenants in See? two different buildings. Additionally, there are accusations against Liberty One related to lead poisoning cases in buildings where children were affected according to court documents. Bragg's Home Care Corp., which was given $24 million 24 by the million. city in mid-2023 to manage five shelters, has also come under scrutiny. Take the money. They don't do anything to fix, clean, prepare, get together. And then I'm thinking, is all this just a Band-Aid on the whole system? Is all of this just putting a Band-Aid on something that is a much deeper bleed. We've cut an artery and we're trying to put a Band-Aid on it to cover it up. That is this really gonna solve things? Or are we just trying to do something to, you know, just plug a hole right now so that we can keep it from leaking too much? In March, the city reported that residents at a Bragg's Run shelter in Sheepshead Bay fell ill due to spoiled food, mm. leading to multiple emergency room visits for children and adults. A spokesperson from the Department of Homeless Services assured Brownstoner that the incident was uncommon and promptly resolved. They emphasized that safeguarding residents' health and safety and addressing challenges with rapid shelter expansions are top priorities. So if the government knows all this, why is it pressing hard on this decision? Exactly. Harlem residents are accusing the city oh, of using the bait and switch tactic mm -hmm. on them. They tell us what was built as a luxury apartment building almost 10 years ago is now being turned into a migrant shelter. Now, this is another hot topic of debate yeah, in the Big There's Apple. another one. See, this was originally meant to be this type of high-end hotel or place to live. And now we're turning it into a migrant shelter, which, wait a minute. That's not what that purpose was for. And what, you know, if I'm in the neighborhood, what are you thinking? Apple, that also boils down to the surge of migrants. They're actually turning this into a sanctuary for asylum seekers. The building near 130th Street was initially designed as a luxury living space with amenities like an indoor swimming pool and marble bathrooms, where residents paid market rates for a comfortable lifestyle. However, it has remained vacant for 10 years due to foreclosure on the developers. Mayor Eric Adams recently proposed converting this building into a shelter for newly arrived migrants. But this plan faced strong opposition from community members like McDaniel, who feel Harlem doesn't need another shelter. McDaniel emphasizes the urgent need for permanent, affordable, income-driven housing in the area, expressing concerns about how children in the shelter would integrate into the community and attend school, 
given the temporary nature of the shelter environment. No. It brings the value of everything down and it is mixing in everybody who come from all different places. And that's what they're saying with children going to school. Uh, shelters are temporary. People, trans, they, they're transient from these. They go from one to the other. They leave. They come back. You're not getting any steady flow like somebody coming in to buy an apartment or to buy a home and to live in a community. These are people that come and go and you don't know when they're going to be here, when they're not. And it can create all kinds of problems in schools for sure. No, I don't agree with it. It turned into a sanctuary for asylum seekers. No, when we have people right here that need the space. Following community backlash, the city reconsidered and decided to repurpose the facility to provide shelter for families in need from New York City. Yes. I know what's going on here. We're not moving folks into a brand new building when you have long-term needs into a community. That's yeah. not gonna happen. Despite this adjustment, some community members remained discontented with the idea of turning the building into a shelter. However, not everyone in Harlem opposes the concept of establishing a shelter at 2201 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. BLV. Benjamin Omwudiwe, a local pharmacist who has owned a nearby pharmacy for nearly 12 years, believes that homeless individuals in Harlem could benefit from another shelter option. The Department of Social Services is now exploring the possibility of using the building for permanent housing placements for individuals who currently rely on the city's shelter system to survive. The agency reports an increase of 17% in placing shelter residents into permanent housing, reflecting ongoing efforts to address housing instability in New York City. Too many homeless shelters in this community. So, here's mm. what we have been able to make out of this situation. Yeah, people have struggled with even just having homeless shelters or having a large homeless population. Now we've got a migrant population on top of it that I think is even just huger. New York City's response to the migrant crisis has been chaotic and ineffective. The city's leaders have been contradictory in their approach, requesting that migrants leave the temporary shelters while also creating new shelters that may not be safe or suitable. In the process, they have exposed migrants to criminal activities mm. and health risks. Yeah. The result is a crisis that is not only putting the well-being of migrants at risk, but also undermining the city's reputation as a place of refuge. Ultimately, the lack of a coherent plan has only worsened the situation, and it is time for the city to rethink its approach. These are desperate people who have come from all different kinds of environments across the world and don't play by the same rules that we do. Just like if we went to their country, I wouldn't know any other country's rules until I assimilated and figured it out. But a lot of these people can come in, and I think a lot of young adult men are coming in, 20s, 30s, 40s, I think, are coming in. That's what I see down here anyway, from what's reported. And there's a lot of crime. We've got to do something about this. We've got to stop this trend from happening to, to preserve our own country, I believe. This is big because it's going to affect the mental health of everybody. If this happens in New York City, imagine living there in fear for your safety and wondering what your kids are going to school with in terms of mixing people that are coming in and out and leaving at different points. And then just keeping our country and our cities the way that we've meant them to be. It's not real therapy, but man, this is in need of some therapy. We need some mental health people in on this to be able to help uh, figure out what's going on. Give me your comments. Let me know what you think. This is a huge topic today. Your voice needs to be heard. Let me know. Remember, mental health matters. We'll see you on the next Reaction Therapy.